there's four specific recommendations under the key message of that nurses need to advance their education in a seamless way. The first one is that um, we recommend for healthcare organizations to implement residency programs and for these to be supported by governments and other private and, 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 um, and uh, non-private institutions. And the reason for this is that there's, there's clear evidence that nurse residency programs have a benefit for the nurses themselves they feel more competent and more satisfied in their work settings. There's also benefits for healthcare organizations. So healthcare organizations have been able to reduce cost in terms of training new, new nurses that are lost because they don't have that transition, that transitionary period. A lot of our graduates from UM complain about this. You know, they complain that when they graduate from the university, they're expe they expect nursing to be in one way, and when they actually get into practice, they find it to be something different, something remarkably different. And it's usually in a negative way. <laughs> um, and often in times, they're, they're very stressed at that transitionary period, they don't feel comfortable in that role, and this nurse residency uh, programs allow that transition. And the idea here is not only for new nurses to go through a residency program, but also for nurses that switch from one area to another. So one thing that we would expect in the future is that there'll be nurses in more community-based settings, and so those nurses would also have, you know, they should have access to nurse residency programs that would help them transition from an acute care center to a, a less acute and more community-based center. The fourth recommendation is um, that we increase the proportion of nurses with a baccalaureate degree from 50 to 80 percent by 2020, uh, with an attention to increasing the diversity of those of those nurses. Um, and so, the 80 percent is is a target that we set because we saw that as being feasible, and we had the individuals from that research network that I, I, I referred to previously crunch some numbers and see if that was actual something that something that was actually possible and 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 according to the results that was what we see here. We currently have the capacity to be able to do this. And also we wanted to respect the important role that non baccalaureate trained nurses play in the healthcare delivery system and allow for that transition for everyone to also increase in terms of their level of, of education. The fifth recommendation was to double the number of nurses with doctoral degrees by 2020, with attention again here to increasing diversity. So, this is the number of nurses that have their doctorates, uh, their, their DNPs, doctorate in nursing practice and their PhDs. Um, to be the innovators of nursing practice, to create the science, to, to create the evidence base. And then the last one is to ensure that nurses engage in lifelong learning. That's something that has been important to our profession always. The, the difference here, here, or what we're emphasizing here, is that it's not only the responsibility of nurses to do this, but also the responsibility of healthcare organizations to provide opportunities for nurses to engage in lifelong learning, whether it's supporting them to, to get a higher level of, of education or whether it's providing them with opportunities to gain uh, competencies in, in certain areas. A great example of this is the Oregon Consortium for Nursing Education, the, the ACNI model. And here, um, the Oregon Health and Science University has partnered with eight community colleges, and students in the community colleges are dually enrolled when they enter the program. They don't have to apply. This is nothing. This is every nurse that is in the community college is also dually enrolled in uh, Oregon Health and Science University. And so they complete their first three years at the community college, and then they finish, they, they graduate with their associate's degree, and then they go for their fourth year into the university, and they, they finish with their baccalaureate degree. And they find that, that almost half of their nurses do this in a seamless way. 
The next key message in terms of recommendations is nurses as leaders. So we have a recommendation for, uh, for there to be expanded opportunities for nurses to lead and diffuse collaborative improvement efforts. So with this recommendation, there's two parts. Nurses need to take it upon themselves and also you know, show more leadership and take on more leadership positions. At the same time, nurses need to be allowed to do this. So healthcare organizations, governments, um, institutions need to have these positions available and provide these positions and ensure that nursing rep rep representatives are at these uh, positions. Nurses, as, as we've mentioned, are of tremendous value and they have a unique knowledge base and perspective. And so they need to be present in terms of making these leadership uh, decisions. And then the last one here is that we need to prepare and enable nurses to be leaders. You know, we, we recently at, at the University of Miami, we recently met with some of our partners in the community, some of the major employers of our graduates. And we were discussing with them, we we're asking them to tell us what is it that they want us to produce? What type of nurse do they want us to produce? And none of them mentioned that they want a nurse that can do this skill or that can practice in an acute care setting or that can do all these high tech things that we often think of being important in nursing education. What they wanted was a nurse that was demonstrated leadership that could communicate effectively. Those are the core things that they wanted. And so we need to do a better job, not only in, in universities and colleges of training nurses that are leaders, but also in healthcare organizations of giving opportunities for nurses to develop these leader, leadership skills. One of the things that, that we saw, and one of the things that I saw personally during the study process uh, for this uh, Institute of Medicine report was the impact that the TCAP project has had in certain hospitals. So TCAP is transforming care at the bedside. It's a program that has been funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. And it's this program is directed to engage everyone into healthcare decision making and to create innovative projects. And one of the of the individuals or groups that they've engaged most are bedside nurses. And I saw some amazing projects coming from bedside nurses that were directed by them and resulted in great improvements in health outcomes. And on a national level, we've seen that when nurses are engaged in terms of um, making decisions and changing practice, good things happen. There's really great outcomes. And here we have a list of some of the improvements that have been seen. There's been reductions in falls, patient days, the amount of, of days that patients stays in hospitals, the amount of times that patients return to the hospital. Um, there's been improvements in the number of, uh, the amount of time that nurses have to spend with their patients, uh, the retention of nurses, and also with patient satisfaction. I'm gonna skip over this one. The, the, last, um, the last recommendation again is building an infrastructure to have better workforce data. And it's not just having better workforce data for nurses, but also for other healthcare providers so that we're able to make better predictions of what type of healthcare provider is needed, where they need to be deployed, et cetera. And um, with the, the passing of the, of the law, um, there was a development, they instituted a new commission, which was the National Healthcare Workforce Commission, which gave the community a great opportunity to try to inform and try to direct some of their actions in the future. And so this is one of the recommendations that we gave to them in terms of them taking leadership over. And we also, um, we also recommended that they have nursing, the nursing perspective represented on this workforce commission. <laughs> 